This unassuming little bird is a Pacific Ornero, a female. She's foraging on the ground, typical behavior for this species, and she's searching intently for any insects that she can find. Her urgency is warranted, as the competition is rife here in the grassland, and she is not just trying to support herself. Like so many of us, she has mouths to feed. Though they may not appear to be all that interesting, the Ornero's unusual name provides a hint into what is actually a fascinating life story. And in fact, piecing together the clues that birds provide through their activities can reveal more about the world around us than you would ever believe. We are going to show you how to read between the lines in nature in a way that will totally change how you see birds, as their stories may hold the key to figuring out how our wildlife will respond to ever greater threats to their survival in a rapidly changing world. Today, we are standing in South America, in Western Ecuador, and we have a particular mission in being here. Unfortunately, much of the habitat here in the tropics is being rapidly developed for human use. And what we want to do is understand how that human development impacts the wildlife that exists here. We're going to be studying birds as one of the primary ways to understand this interaction between humans and wildlife. And birds represent a great group to study to do this because their life stories are very conspicuous. They're a lot easier to detect than a lot of the other animals that live here. And we can learn a lot about their biology just by observing them and seeing what they're up to. The area that we're exploring is a great place to do this because we are actually standing on a working horse ranch where there's a lot of land that's cleared for human use, but also a lot of habitat left over that would represent the native tropical dry forest ecosystem, which happens to be one of the most threatened habitats in all of Ecuador. Our goal is to assess how productive an ecosystem the ranch actually represents and determine what ecological niches are supported here. Because with so little native habitat left in the region, semi-wild areas like this one are becoming some of the last viable homes for local wildlife, making them quite important for conservation. This kind of assessment normally isn't possible without complicated and time-intensive research, but we have picked up a surprisingly simple trick that allows you to look at any bird and roughly estimate its role in the ecosystem just from its beak, which enables us to survey the ranch's ecological diversity much faster than we could otherwise. Though it may sound far-fetched, bird beaks actually provide a lot of clues about their lifestyle because they generally fall into a couple categories that reflect the feeding style that they have evolved for, which means that by identifying what kind of beak a bird has, you can quickly approximate what it eats. Paired with observations of its behavior, this allows you to extrapolate the bird's ecological role. And to get started, let's look at the basic types of beaks with some examples from birds that we've seen here. Straight beaks, like that of this cattle egret, are best suited for catching things whole, like fish or insects, while the hooked beak of this Peruvian pygmy owl is used to tear pieces off of larger prey like mammals or reptiles. These stunning saffron finches use their short, thick, conical beaks to crush any hard food items like seeds and nuts. And finally, you'll notice that the beak of this Pacific parrotlet is sort of a mix of other beak shapes, which suggests multiple functions, as it's hooked for tearing bits of fruit, but also conical for crushing seeds. To put this trick into practice, we're going to take a look at two birds foraging in the trees here, and I want you to see if you can figure out what they eat when they appear on screen. First up is this male black-cheeked woodpecker, and when you look at his beak, you can see that it's straight, sharp, and pretty thick. Got an idea of his diet yet? The shape tells you that he's catching his prey whole, and the size gives you a clue that he's mainly eating insects and other invertebrates. Now that we know what he eats, watching him forage for a few minutes allows us to flesh out what his ecological niche is, as we can see that the thick design of the beak allows him to peck through wood and extract prey directly from the insides of trees. The next bird we're looking at is this streak-headed wood creeper. This one isn't too hard, right? His sharp and relatively straight beak indicates that he is also an insect hunter, though the long curved shape reflects a totally different niche from the other species. Indeed, this wood creeper is a bark and foliage gleaner, meaning that he uses his unusually long beak to pick insects out of crevices in tree bark and vegetation where smaller beaks can't reach. With this trick, every bird we observe becomes a data point in our assessment, 
And with the number of birds that we're seeing as we explore, we've been able to account for an encouraging number of ecological roles on the ranch. There are abundant ground-dwelling herbivores like these Ecuadorian ground doves, multiple species of aerial insect hunters, including tropical kingbirds and social flycatchers, and even aquatic hunters like these adorable least greaves and this stunning masked water tyrant. We've noticed that a lot of the predatory species are able to focus on different types of prey from each other, which suggests that there is a healthy population of smaller animals to make up the lower levels of the food web. Looking at feeding behavior is just one way to analyze the ecosystem, though, and there are other facets of bird biology that can provide even more valuable insights. We've caught up with the Ornetto again. Looks like she's still busy foraging in the pasture. This is not surprising, because she is engaged in one of the most important processes of her life that demands a lot of energy. She is raising offspring. She may not look like it, but this Ornero is actually a talented architect. She and her mate have spent many hours diligently molding mud and grass into a unique dome-shaped nest, which has a specialized chamber design that protects her chicks inside. In fact, it's her engineering prowess that has earned her her name. The shape of the nest closely resembles an old clay oven, and the name Ornero is derived from the Spanish word for oven, orno. Once constructed, she and her mate will utilize the nest for the whole mating season, and the monogamous couple will remain together to raise their chicks. Just supporting yourself is hard enough in this ecosystem, so she has her work cut out for her if she and her chicks are to survive here. But despite the challenges, Orneros appear to be thriving on the ranch, as we found multiple active nests around the property. Seeing even one species able to successfully reproduce in this habitat is an important note for our assessment, but it's not just Orneros that have managed to settle here. One of the ranch's noisiest residents, the Fasciated Wren, has made a home here as well. And trust me when I tell you, these guys were hard to miss. One of the first sounds we heard every morning was the harsh squawking of these birds communicating, and it turns out there's a good reason for this. Fasciated wrens are cooperative breeders, meaning that their offspring receive care not only from their immediate parents, but also from an additional group of individuals called helpers. A group consists of up to 10 individuals, including one dominant breeding pair, and this arrangement allows for the labor of raising offspring to be distributed among more birds, and therefore reduces the time and energy cost for each group member. This survival strategy does have its drawbacks, though, as a single nest of fasciated wrens will require significantly more food and other resources than the nest of another species would. Even still, these tenacious birds have carved out an existence for themselves here, which provides further evidence that the ranch is functioning as a productive ecosystem. Nesting and breeding are particularly notable behaviors to pay attention to for this assessment, as they often tell us more about how birds are utilizing a habitat than other behaviors we can observe. For example, feeding can happen sporadically as birds travel through an area, and just seeing birds feeding here doesn't necessarily suggest that they spend a lot of time on the ranch. However, building a nest and raising chicks requires a considerable investment of time and energy that is centralized in a particular location. So, observing these behaviors here indicates that more of the bird's life story is playing out on the ranch, and a very important part at that. Essentially, this means that the birds nesting here are getting everything they need to perpetuate their species right from this ecosystem, which is a good sign that the habitat is reasonably healthy. The fact that we saw multiple species with markedly different lifestyles nesting in the same place further supports this idea because, generally speaking, the more diverse lifestyles an ecosystem is capable of supporting, the richer and healthier it is. Each species has different requirements that must be met in order for them to reproduce successfully, so every species we observe carrying out this vital process on the ranch represents a novel lifestyle that the ecosystem can sustain. For instance, the Pacific Parrotlet, a generalist herbivore eating primarily fruit, requires a totally different assortment of resources to survive than a more specialized insectivore like the fasciated wren. But we saw both of these species nesting on the ranch. Thus, we can infer that this habitat has sufficient resources to enable both of these life strategies. It was encouraging to see the diversity of lifestyles that exist here, and our findings offer a glimmer of hope that the ranch, and other areas like it, will be able to support future generations of birds in the long term. So, considering everything we were able to observe here, how productive of an ecosystem is the ranch really? It's hard to quantify exactly, of course, but overall we found the ranch to be pretty healthy for a human-modified area. 
the ecosystem supports a decent diversity of ecological roles, including some specialized lifestyles that are reliant on specific habitat features, but it's mostly dominated by smaller, generalist species that are more tolerant of people and can live almost anywhere. It also seemed to be lacking some major ecological niches that you would see in a fully functional ecosystem. Most notably, we didn't see any large predatory birds on the ranch, which suggests that there may not be enough food sources here to support top-level consumers. Though the abundance of birds we encountered here was impressive, the diversity of the ranch is still far lower than that of the native tropical dry forest ecosystem, which is a topic we'll cover in greater detail in a future video. So, our conclusion is that while human-modified habitats like the ranch are certainly capable of supporting rich and productive ecosystems, they can never replace the function of true old-growth habitats like the tropical dry forest, which is why it's so critical to protect what little of it remains here in Ecuador. It's important to point out that the methods we use to make this assessment are able to be used by anyone, and they work no matter where in the world you are. With a little practice, anyone can learn to interpret their local ecosystem this way, and doing so can provide valuable insights into the changes that are happening all around us. This is a simple way of connecting with nature on a deeper and more enriching level, so we encourage you to go out and take a closer look at the birds in your area. You may be surprised at just how much you can learn from our avian neighbors, if you know what to look for. If you want to see another incredible birding adventure from the tropics, check out this video where we explore three of Costa Rica's richest ecosystems to see how many birds we can find. And with that, we hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you in the next one.